Good morning, everybody. I'll try to rush through. I'm going to cover uh, ASOCT and its role. Uh, everybody in this uh, audience is well experienced and knows that ASOCT is a wonderful tool. It can help you in diagnostic uh, Im imaging and planning your surgeries. The only thing is I would say that well, you cannot take things in isolation. Just one instrument is not enough. So you have the clinical picture. For the morphology, we have the, uh, the clinical picture, the optical and the ultrasound that can be used depending upon the case. And then the refractive uh, maps and then at, at the cellular level it will require the CONFO scan. So uh, you have to customize the inv investigations based on the clinical picture and at the same time you have to teach and learn from, uh, from the uh, entire team because sometimes you have a technician who's doing the investigation who may not be totally cognizant with the clinical um, implications. So let's not forget the benefit of the humble slit lamp photograph uh, and then as a cross section we have optical ASOCT. Uh, this is what I meant to say that if you have a technician who doesn't know what the physical pathology is and is just taking the image and drawing a diagram, that could give a fallacious result. And the clinician, depending upon how busy they are, they cannot rely totally on the report that you get. So you have to put everything together. And uh, it is not just a simple uh, image, but you have to take uh, particularly things like corneal dystrophies, etc. You have to have the full range of the standard clinical uh, imaging. Uh, so ASOCT, as we know, is non-contact, non invasive, it's an extremely useful tool. Um, in cases where there may be a, 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 a low visibility, you also combine it with UBM to see the, a, a better visualization of the anterior segment structures. And um, as far as the refractive, so it's not only a question of the depth of involvement, it's also what is doing to the surface of the cornea. So you have to also take the mapping of the cornea into consideration and involve uh, the, um, both the um, placebo base as well as the Schemfluke imaging to put everything together. I have no financial interest in any of the devices. So finally, I would say that at a cellular level, confocal microscopy, as we've already mentioned, that would again give you additional information. For example, uh, what is the level of the involvement? What is the nature of the involvement? And uh, the specular microscopy, let's not forget, sometimes you're, you're doubtful. There are the cases which you're not very sure what it is, and you would also like to know what the endothelium is um, uh, uh, like. So here, coming to a few case studies, here we have a 30 year old female who has a known case of Down syndrome. She had hand movements and she was uh, uh, diagnosed a case of keratoconus with resolving high drops. And um, this is what we found on the ASOCT. So the high drops, the, the, the desmets, there was a small pocket of desmets um, which was still detached and the cornea was still thick. And uh, uh, this is the mapping that was done and we had planned the patient for an um, optical keratoplasty oblique talc. Um, this is another patient who was 64 years old. He was diagnosed as a case of trachomatis sequelae with spheroidal degeneration, had a vision of 636 and 618. In such cases, it's good to know whether, uh, what is the nature of the cataract and what is the extent of the cataract, because whether you want to do a single stage procedure or a two stage procedure. Uh, this is the way the ASOCT showed a considerable amount of irregularity and also um, the, you, you, you like to get a confirmation about the thinnest level and then we uh, pl planned a deep anterior lamella keratoplasty here is a surgical video the ASOCT preoperatively does help you to decide the depth that you would refine if you're using a, a, a vacuum to refine as a starting point. Uh, um, and uh, so, so it helped me to decide the depth to go. This, this is a Moria version of a vacuum to refine. And then you do a lamella dissection. And in the interest of time, I'll just advance it. Here I would say it is not only a question of um, 3D surgery is kind of a fourth dimension where you're also getting the physical feel of the tissue. That can make a difference because sometimes uh, the tissues are much, much more hard and more uh, rigid uh, when you're doing the dissection. And then uh, the, I had I anticipated because of the rigidity, I felt initially that a big bubble would not work. I still attempted it, but it was incomplete. And then I pr proceeded with a manual dissection to complete the case. Uh, this is another case, 81 year old who had vision of finger counting, both eyes trachomatis keratopathy with spheroidal degeneration. So here's a little different from the previous case. So the diagnosis was similar, but the, the, but the appearance is quite different. And uh, the surgery here, again, we looked at the map and then a surgery was again to plan a deep anterior lamella keratoplasty. Uh, this is an example of cases where you have perforations, where you have therapeutic keratoplasty, tectonic surgeries are, are, are planned. Uh, 
they, they can also help you to decide uh, when to intervene and how to intervene. And then combined with the confocal microscopy that you may have. Uh, so with that, I'll stop. Thank you.